A new generation of leaders is rising up. We've lived the insecurity and the indignity of an eviction notice. We have lived that feeling of helplessness when someone you love is very sick. But Joe knows we can never let hard times turn us against each other. He understands that leadership means fighting for the people who built this country. All of you. All of us. us. Last night's speakers detailed an optimistic future for the Democratic Party. And I'm joined now by three of those speakers, Pennsylvania State Representative Malcolm Kenyatta, Michigan State Representative Mari Manugian, and Georgia State Representative Sam Park. Thank you all for being here. I'm going to go right down the middle. I'm going to go ladies first. Uh, Mari, let's talk about um, what do you think the vision that the Democratic Party, what, what vision should they be embracing? We saw a lot of variety uh, last night, all the way from a Colin Powell. You know, that you saw some old school people like Bill Clinton. Um, we know that Joe Biden is also very old school, but then he's got this brand new, you know, shiny VP. And then, of course, um, you also had Alessandro Ocasio-Cortez and Tracy and Stacey Abrams who were speaking. So what do you think should be the vision uh, and the message to younger people? So I think the message and vision for younger people is that the Democratic Party is inclusive of everyone. We are the big tent party where, yes, folks like John Kasich can come and speak at our convention. But you also saw a keynote address with myself and 16 other colleagues of mine from around the country who represent a new generation of leadership who are leading on bold issues in our communities like replacing the lead pipes in Michigan uh, and fighting for public education in Georgia. And of course, my good friend Malcolm Kenyatta doing great work to make sure his constituents are getting the unemployment they need as well. Yeah. And so, Malcolm, you have been you've been called up. So I'm going to go ahead and let you go next, because I mean, the thing is, I think, you know, there's a there's a there's a media perception that tries to separate younger and more progressive voters from the party writ large, you know, in part by looking at what Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the position she was given um, last night in, in the in the lineup. Right. And I think people who don't know conventions don't understand that somebody nominates the second place person. So she wasn't doing some crazy thing showing up and saying she nominates Bernie Sanders. Like her literal job was to nominate, to place his name in nomination because it's a courtesy that's given to no. the person who finishes second. So that happens every time, everybody who freaked out. But I think that that was an, an opportunity for the media to kind of, you know, go along the, the wrong path and try to say, well, these par the party is split. Do you see the, do you see the party as being split? So, so listen, this is what people are asking for. Beating Donald Trump is the floor in terms of what we need to do. You know, so much of what America says about itself was written right here in Philadelphia in a hot summer, a lot like this one. But what we need right now is to get rid of the destructive, divisive president that we have in the White House and replace him with somebody like Joe Biden that has clear plans about what he wants to accomplish and also is the type of person and the type of leader that knows how to lead as well as listen. And that's why I think he's been able to unite the party after one of the most competitive uh, primaries in a long time. And I think that's the type of president Joe Biden's going to be as well. And Sam, let me get you into this, too, because I, I, first of all, I love the, the patina of the three of you, because this is what America, this is the new America, right? It's an America that is diverse, that is diverse in every way, and that, you know, and this is something that's welcome and that's making our country stronger. Uh, and you, Sam, I know you're Korean-American, um, and uh, we've seen as part of Donald Trump's messaging a very anti-Asian. I mean, he directs it at China, but, you know, I have friends that are Korean-American who also take it personally, just as anyone who's AAPI feels included in the dis. And he's made that like a cornerstone of even the way he talks about coronavirus. In, in your, among people that you know, among your family, is this activating people more into politics or discouraging them? Absolutely. I think it's another indication of why we need to get involved, because we have the power to hold Trump and other Republicans who have and continue to spout these anti-Asian harmful uh, uh, statements accountable. Uh, we, the people, have the power. And, and I think this November, we're united in our desire uh, to get folks like Biden and Democrats across this country elected to do just that. Yeah. And you guys are in some critical, critical states. Uh, I'm going to play a little bit of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Again, doing the things she was tasked to do, people, by now. But this is the part of her speech. This isn't the nominating part, but here's a part of her speech. A mass people's movement working to establish 21st century social, economic and human rights 
including guaranteed health care, higher education, living wages, and labor rights for all people in the United States. A movement striving to recognize and repair the wounds of racial injustice, colonization, misogyny, and homophobia. I'm going to start again with Ladies First, Mari. How does, how does that get done? Because listen, you all are state representatives. A lot of this work actually takes place in the states, not at the federal level. How do you pragmatically, and I'll ask each of you to answer that question, how do you pragmatically do those things? Well, I'll tell you right now, here in Michigan, we are absolutely deeply focused on flipping the state legislature. We are four seats down from taking majority. You had our amazing governor, Gretchen Whitmer, on earlier on your show, and we adore her in my caucus for sure. And we need to give her a majority to work with. And so that is what we are focused on right here. And of course, you know, our caucus is reflective of the diversity of the Democratic Party. You have uh, folks who are born and bred in the labor movement, and you have brand new folks who are brand new to politics that ran for office the first time in 2018, who see you know environmental justice as their most important cornerstone issue. And so this is a big tent a party, and our caucus is a big tent caucus. So in yeah. Michigan, we're focused on flipping the legislature. And Sam, you're in a tough state. Georgia is it's difficult for a lot of reasons. You don't have a very cooperative secretary of state. You don't have a very cooperative, uh, you know, state government. And so how do you make those kind of changes in a state where you're getting that kind of a fight? I think Stacey Abrams demonstrated it perfectly, which was to empower people by getting them registered to vote and then fighting for free and fair elections. Um, it's we, the people who, despite our diversity, um, are united in our desire for progress, uh, to continue that march for justice, uh, to ensure justice and liberty for all. And, and I, don't, I don't think those are just mere words. I think all of us can find um, a desire to join that effort, um, especially in, the, in light of what we've seen under the Trump administration. Yeah. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.